going on, you guys? Welcome to One of Each, the Dumb and Hungry podcast, where we talk about our food adventures and our favorite food groups. I'm Angelo, the Dumb and Hungry. And I'm Jamie. I'm not dumb. <laughs> Thank you for joining <laughs> us. Hope you're doing all right. Hey, Jamie, how's it going? You definitely are not dumb. I can assure you that. <laughs> it's funny because we kind of rehearsed this, and I was like, uh, he says he's dumb and hungry, but I know that's your name, but I'm, I was like, and I'm not dumb. I, you certainly <laughs> are not, but uh, we're we're glad to have you. Uh, welcome back once again. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I didn't even think I'd be here <laughs> two times in a row, so I, I'm impressing myself. You got a better batter, uh, batting average than my child, I'll tell you that right now. Um, so we won't hold that against him. No, we won't. We won't. Um, but my I hope you're, you're doing okay. Hope you're still alive out there. So that's fine. Uh, whatever, whatever we didn't, not like we had any grand plans or anything laid out. So, um, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, we're fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's going on with you? Um, Jamie? Uh, nothing. I just returned from work. Um, and pleasantly surprised since I am on an academic schedule, mm-hmm. which no restaurants unless you are on an academic campus no but you get a half day oh yeah so you only open half a day and then you have uh the monday off and so i have a, a three-day weekend so that's that's very nice beautiful. very excited beautiful about that like i should be getting ready for the week you know getting myself mentally prepared and i get to put that off for another 24 hours <laughs> it must be nice yeah it's very nice good well um it, we we did get to you know take some take advantage of that time because we don't have to rush right into anything. Uh, we don't have to worry about the Sunday scaries or anything like waking up for Monday or anything like that. So we it's nice to have that day off. And so I think we took advantage of that and uh, we made some plans to to meet. <laughs> we up. made some plans to go to a restaurant which we did not go to today. <laughs> not today, but uh, someday soon. I can tell you. Um, but that's okay. Um, again, my show. It's uh, we're not holding it against you. So. Um, but what, remind me, where, where did we, what did we originally have planned, um, you know, to do? Uh, I just know we were going to go to a, like some sort of Asian restaurant cause Lunar New Year's is upon us. So I was like, oh, we should do some foods for Lunar New Year's. So you had got some reservations to a restaurant. I don't want to say because it's like, we're going to probably go there at yeah. some point. No, so we will. I don't want to, I don't want to upset the three people that listen to this <laughs> podcast that's very generous the three people including us that like we <laughs> listen to it that's right uh so i i think last night i ended up putting like a last minute edition of of needle mm-hmm. um yeah. yeah of needle in silver lake and so i'm glad you did because that is uh what ended up happening um you know in in instead so uh while well, we'll look forward to wherever we'll be going, I don't know, where we had originally planned, um, I'm glad we ended up going here instead, uh, ending up here, because uh, we'll be talking about that um, pretty shortly. So, um, you got a guest with you? Let's, uh... Oh, yeah. No, it's like my dog. She's off in the... She's off on stage right. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't make it into the frame, but she's sleeping next to us. Well, she's welcome uh, to jump in if she if she wants to. Um Cool. Well, all right. But uh, thanks again, uh, Jamie, for, for being here. And thanks, everyone, for joining us as we talk about our food adventures, our local spots, and um, pe- pop-ups with uh, good food and, and good people. So uh, today's, you know, today we just kind of want to talk about, again, like a very casual Sunday, almost kind of a gloomy Sunday, you know? It, the weather is just... Uh, yeah, the rain is about to start yesterday. It, like, rained all day, yeah. I believe. Uh, and then tomorrow, I believe, it's going to rain even more. Yeah. So um, I think we're, we were lucky today uh, to go out uh, when it was not like torrential. Yeah. Like, just like no sun, yeah. which sucks. Um, but honestly, I kind of like these days. Like I was just thinking like, oh, I wish it was hotter. But it's like when it's hot, it's like, oh, this sucks. I wish it was colder. <laughs> so it's like grass is greener on the other side. We're just never happy. <laughs> I, <laughs> you know, when we were in the restaurant, I <laughs> when we were in the restaurant, I heard like, I don't know, their parents or a couple. But one of them was already talking about the end of daylight savings oh times. And I was just like, God damn it. Let's just take one <laughs> fucking day at a time, please. Yeah. I know. Like it, I could hear him being like, "Oh, you like lose one hour of sleep, but you get one day of sunlight." <laughs> and I'd rather have that. And I'm just like, 
you know, we just had daylight savings time start like what two months ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we still have a while. Yeah, there's still yeah. a little ways to go. Like it's just get a grip, people. <laughs> like you're half in, you're half out. <laughs> can't wait to get in. You can't wait to get out. Oh, I don't know. Man. I'm just I'm trying to take my time and enjoy things as well, like these days off. Mm -hmm, um, exactly. Yeah, I tend to I used to get kind of angry once it would be like Sunday or uh, when I was working for other restaurants, um, I'll call it my Mick job <laughs> because it's so terrible. Like, um, you know, like my Tuesday, mm -hmm, I'd already mm -hmm. be pissed because like, oh, I have to get into work Wednesday. And it's like, I don't know. We got to stop being like that, I think. And just try to control what we can control. I think so. so. I think so. I don't know. Just like hearing that just made me like, oh, come on, man. <laughs> it's like barely January. Yeah, get a grip, people. Yeah, 2023 just started. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I think we'll. I think we tried to make the most of today. You know uh, what we could do, and I think um, we'll we'll talk about that very soon. And I think it turned out pretty pretty well. I gotta say. Actually, before we continue, can you hand me that? I think you made uh, that was something that so, you. Uh, I made des I made desserts. I'm actually. Uh, you know, there's a, it's kind of like a, a rule, like you never try new recipes out mm -hmm. for like for dinner party days or whatever. So mm -hmm. I needed to kind of satellite like, and I don't make desserts and okay. you know, I don't yeah, make you're desserts. Not, you're not sweet. So yeah. I made a s'mores bar. So I made the crust, the ganache. Uh -huh. uh, the only thing I did not make was the marshmallows or the actual chocolate. Well, I think uh, it looks pretty good. Um, so I think. You had men you had mentioned that um, you were trying to, you know, make this recipe without a uh, particular ingredient. Or oh yeah, so there's a there's apparently an egg shortage. Um, eggs are going for like an insane, like absorbent like amount right now. Mm -hmm. I think what uh, what a dozen eggs used to be what three dollars, two dollars. If that, yeah. Is now going upwards to seven dollars. It's insane. I think um, a friend of mine went to a farmer's market in Pasadena. It was twenty four. Oh my god. What? Uh, no, I'm sorry. It was 10 bucks for a pallet of 24 eggs. Mm. That's still a lot of money. I mean, granted, it's like organic, I guess, because it's at the farmer's market, but so? <laughs> it's still expensive. It's um, expensive. So uh, like, I'm kind of, I kind of wanted to put that constraint that I don't use eggs because mm -hmm. I would rather use that for breakfast Yeah, because I only get paid once a month oh still. God, so yeah. that's like a, <laughs> that's a stream of protein that can be sustained for a whole month. Mm -hmm. Um, so I figured, so yeah, so I looked at this recipe and it's just, it's butter. Butter can still be on sale. Butter's good. Yeah. There's graham crackers. There's, um, I've never made ganache, so I was very excited about that. Yeah. Um, however, for some reason there weren't miniature marshmallows and I noticed jumbo was available, but now looking at it, like my notes, part of my notes is like you have to use mini marshmallows cause it melts better. Okay. Well, I get it. But uh, I'm still eating it. And I mean, it, you're eating it. I know it's good. Like, it's good, yeah. but it's, like, ugly delicious. Mm -hmm. And I want them to be, like, really nice, perfect little squares for this party, you okay. know? Well, well, you'll know now. Yeah, there's, a, like I said, like, I took a lot of notes. Um, what's nice is, like, I can, I can make the crust up to four days before. I can even make the ganache and set that to where maybe the day of the party or the night before, I can just finish off the marshmallows mm -hmm. and then cut. Mm. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, beautiful. Well, um, it's a 10 out of 10, so. <laughs> Thank you. I, I don't do desserts at all. Yeah, sure. No, I, I get grew it. Up, I grew up, like, my mom, like, never made desserts. She always made, like, egg rolls and, mm -hmm. like, pancit and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. Is that a Filipino thing? Like, Filipinos just don't. They do sweet, but not, like, chocolate. Mm, yeah. It's, like, coconut milk or whatever. But even then, like, my mom would or, never um, really do like a that. a fruit salad, you know? <laughs> yeah, the fruit salad with the dull fruit, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like the fruit salad with no actual fruit That's right. and uh, a lot of condensed milk and sour That's cream. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like I never actually really made desserts. Um, so it, it gets me a little like nervous mm -hmm. also because you can't really ad lib. Whereas, you know, you can ad lib with soup and stuff. Yeah. You have to like, be really to the T like when like weighing stuff out yeah no i get it um well i think it turned out really well so thank you chef uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're welcome nice um well cool but let's um let's move on and, and kind of talk about the uh the events of today and uh what we managed to get ourselves into and um kind of the food that we we ended up having so we ended up at um at a restaurant called needle uh which is out in um in silver lake 
uh, kind of a nice kind of hip part of town. Oh um, my god, it was so hip! Like <laughs> everyone walking their dogs around and wearing their five paneled hats and <laughs> no, French it, jackets. Yeah, no, it's very trendy. Patagonia. It it looked really nice. Um, I felt very out of place. So I don't yeah, I felt like. I mean, I don't know. I think we're kind of hip. We seemed hip. You're wearing hip glasses. Okay. And all right. I'm wearing. I was wearing my Birkenstocks. Yeah, my mink Birkenstocks. Right. Mm-hmm. So I think we were like. In with it. Mm-hmm. Um, now I was fine. It's not like I remember being younger and going to Melrose Avenue and mm-hmm. like vintage shopping and feeling very inadequate and insecure. Mm. And I, I feel okay. Oh boy. I okay. All right. I like the vibe. Like Good. I like the vibe. Yeah. Um, yeah. I never went to Needle. I always I followed them because I always like coveted their chasu from afar uh, chasu, yes. uh, especially during pandemic they would and i think they still have this and, and uh due to inflation it's gone up i think before it used to be like 40 bucks for chasu mm-hmm. like these take home oh yeah with the like home full-on set. directions yeah. on how to cook it now it's up to 60 yeah but i get it everything is expensive now in this world everything's fucked <laughs> so 60 dollars. well we try to take comfort in uh, the few things that we can enjoy here yeah so. it's, it's really trendy there's like an undefeated and yeah. a shake shack mm-hmm. and like two coffee cafes like well within oh yeah yeah the like area. every every other block or something uh, um but it's really cute inside everything's really like minimalistic and clean mm-hmm. like i love the chairs um and then yeah so a you even you said you just scan a code. Yeah, I mean you sit down, you just at the table you got the uh, you got the QR code and you just use your phone and and then you just order there. You know, I know someone came out to greet us and just kind of orient us to like where different things are, but as far as ordering, it's directly on your phone after scanning that, you know. And then I don't know if you noticed like it's not the same QR code cuz it's a designated table. So when they see the code, they're like, oh, table three. It's for that table, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, and thankfully we didn't get any, uh, we didn't get anything we didn't order. Unlike, unlike uh, our last meal, <laughs> dim sum. Um, Was there anything that we didn't, oh, yeah. I mean, that's like a multi, that's got like tens of hundreds, oh, parsnips in the frame, cute. You know, it's like tens of hundreds of like staffers and stuff like that so it's like i could see confusion with needle it's like they probably have one pos system one printer going out yeah exactly and you could even see them calling you know you can see the girl calling the tickets out so it's a really small operation and smaller is just more simpler for this place yeah no absolutely well, um, as far as what we ordered, let's kind of get into that. Um, we Arship is trying to get, she's like, I want to record too. Yeah, I know. You got <laughs> something to say? You're welcome to, come on, just jump in. Uh, we started off with uh, what came out first was the uh, the popcorn chicken. And uh, that's a dish that you had selected. And um, you had some I'm thoughts about that. I'm a sucker for fried chicken. I'm a sucker yeah. for nugs. Yeah. Like, I'm just, I'll, I see... Karaage, I see anything fried yeah. and chicken yep. or calamari on the menu. I got to get it. Yeah, absolutely. And so what did you think about this uh, particular batch that they made? Because we see these, you know, like boba shops, right? You know, mm-hmm. um, a quick snack, really. Uh, so this was their take on it. And so, um, yeah, what do you think? I mean, like I said, when this came to the table, I was like, you know, when you have like popcorn chicken anywhere, mm-hmm. like you're kind of like, now that we're older, it's like, well, here's how they get it wrong. I mm. mean, this place did it right. Okay. Like, I feel like every piece was just like perfectly coated mm-hmm. and everything was like perfectly seasoned. Um, I actually got no spice, but they still, they had like other like aromatics and stuff in there, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which was like really nice. Um, I loved how hot it was. I hate fucking cold chicken. Yeah. I hate having like dry chicken or... um mostly like the freshness like you can just tell like it's fried to order yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. it was really crunchy and it was uh just the right amount of batter right it's not like yeah, super heavy or anything battery. yeah it wasn't like kfc's pork popcorn chicken yeah. where you're like you kind of get like burnt out or full off the batter <laughs> i know and, and and you could really tell like a lot of the good you know detail in the fry like it you know it's i don't know how to describe it it's like you could see all these little ridges and and little like um you know in the dredge, I guess, whatever they're using. Like, it's just really... I just feel like whatever, like, method they're doing, it's very clean. Like, clean. they're using, like, their, you know, like, maybe, like, I don't know if it's their oil is super clean or, like, you know, there's no, like, weird debris, like, from the basket. 
Uh, it just looks like it's just not dirty. I don't even know how to say that because that's the problem with, you know, deep frying, especially like kind of seedy places. And maybe you like that at Boba Shops uh, mm. where you get popcorn chicken and like there's something like rancid about it or something right. like that that gives a funk to the taste. And I'm not into that. It just tasted really fresh. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I agree with you. And of course, the chicken itself was just really nice and uh, tender, you know, just a nice bite, um, mm-hmm. not dry or nothing. So. Uh, that was a good start, a strong start. Um, yeah, for, that was really nice. So you know, from there, then then started coming out some of the other other dishes. Um, the next one, which we'll talk about, is the the French toast, which oh my god, <laughs> so you know we had a real liking, a real good taking to it. I mean, it, I want to say the pictures doesn't do it justice. What it does, like that's the first thing I think I wanted when I mm-hmm. was, or I think that's the first picture I stumbled when mm-hmm. I sent you that text, like, oh, let's just go, like, needle would be a good option, too. Right, right. Because, um, like, the picture, it's like, you see this massive, like, bread brick. Yeah. And then I think, like, a big thing that I love is seeing, like, that pat of butter. Oh. And you can see it's, like, perfectly melting in all sorts of different directions. That's right. Along with the condensed milk mm-hmm. that's, like, kind of, like, brushed over it yeah and then there's like a sprinkling of like sea flake like salt flakes yeah there yeah exactly exactly like it's just like gooey it's just like and then like when it came to the table i was like it's like even better in person (laughs) i mean it's like you're not being catfished by a dish no i was gonna say we should talk about that being catfished by a dish you know like you'll see something yeah and it totally doesn't meet you know what you expected it to be in a bad way most entrees from like fast food places or something like that. exactly yeah yeah so um okay i'll write that i'll put that down uh as an episode idea (laughs) looks like it's when you're on a date like oh you look just like your pictures thank god (laughs) even better it's not a 50 year old man no absolutely not (laughs) um but it tasted even better so Oh, my God. It tasted so good. And then I was going to say Angelo had this genius thing (laughs) that I think will be in vogue. I think some (laughs) fucking idiot influencer is going to get it, and then they'll pass it off as theirs. But Uh I'm calling it right now. Okay. It's Angelo's move. (laughs) It's a move that's going to be, like, used, like, people are going to figure it out, right? But, like, I'm saying that he's the one that... Like, I, I swear to God, I've never met anyone that's done that. What? Like, it blew my mind. <laughs> he takes the butter pat. He cuts it in half. Okay, so and he cuts it in half perfect where we both get a piece of the butter pat. Because right. I would have said something. I would have been like, yo, mm, I want some of that I want pat. Some butter, of course. But you know better. Of course. Which is good. Trying to treat You're good. a good human. Thank you. Yeah, very considerate. He puts <laughs> the pat in the middle. <laughs> In in between the uh, the French toast, you know, uh, and the layering, um, yeah, and you then just kind of I like that you took the extra precaution of taking the fork down and like smooshing it. Mm-hmm, exactly, that way you get that contact, the heat, you know. Yeah. Because of course, like when it's on top, then you got you know you got the air, right? The cold air and just cooling it down. Of course, uh, it's only heating on one side, the bottom of the pat. But if you put it in the middle of the of the French toast, in this case, then you get contact from both sides, and then the heat, and then the you know it's equal. And I don't know, I'm just a fat ass. That's I, I, I could couldn't help. That. I couldn't help but doing it too. I couldn't help but doing I it too. Just... So, so I did it also. And okay, like so, I guess you know, upon like upon like cutting, I cut a a corner off because I was like, I got to try what a corner is. And it was just like everything is mm-hmm, like crunchy mm-hmm. yeah. and then like a little bit oily, but in a good way. Yeah. And it's like nutty because there's peanut, peanut butter, butter in That's it. That's right. And That's it's right. Like a little bit salty and sweet. I mean, it's it's like what like every french toast wants to be Mm -hmm. um and then when i hit that butter on the inside because like i said i did it too oh my god it was like (laughs) another like gust of richness and like the salt like really like lent to the peanut butter you know i mean the salt really sets it off because it's so sweet yeah exactly like Mm -hmm. um I mean, I don't understand why people aren't putting salt on things with condensed milk before. Mm. Or maybe that wasn't something that people just didn't think of until like salted caramel and all that started getting into the... I don't know. You know, like sea salt foam like started getting into the mix, you know. But I think, yeah, that, whoever made that up, whether they were too drunk or if that's just like something (laughs) in Taiwan that people do, I mean, I wish it came earlier. Yeah. Um, Well, if... uh If you put salt on your sweet things or not, let us know and uh, reach out and see uh, why or why you don't do that. But um, 
I, I, I don't know. I think people, when they say they have a sweet tooth, maybe they really lean into that and they really, all they know is like, I just want something sweet, right? And so they just layer more sweet things on top of sweet things, but they don't give consideration to, you know, the concept of contrast, I guess, you know, yeah. um, to s- offset, you know, something that can be just overly um, sweet or rich or something. I don't know. I think this is a real, that place like Nino is just really well balanced because like in theory, what we were having was like really heavy things. Cause we had like, it's like we had popcorn chicken mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then we had like that French toast. And then we still had like uh, the chasu like bun, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. to be quite honest, like the popcorn chicken was super light. Yeah. Um, the bun was really well balanced. There was a pickle in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had like a side of that eggplant, you know, like, it was like all in all, like it hit all the points of like what you wanted. Yeah, definitely. Uh, in some sort of a brunchy way. Yeah, no, it really hit all the all the spots, and um, I don't know that that trasu bun. Um, as we as we kind of get into that, that you made a good comparison as to uh, what that was. I mean, the trasu bun is a sandwich, basically, right? You, but you got two really thick cuts of a uh, you know pork belly in there, mm-hmm. um, but with the cha- chasu flavor. Um, and you said there's some pickle in there, there's some caramelized onion, um, and it was on, on this really nice kind of bun that holds up really well, you know, but, uh, you made a good comparison of what it could remind you of. And, um, it was more like a, kind of like a bow, you know, like a, yeah. like a pork baked pork bun, you know, that you would get from a, you know, like a dim sum or, or Chinese, you know, spot, you know? Yeah. Like oi, oi is one of my favorite places mm-hmm. to get it. It kind of reminded me of that, but like I said, the bun is really good too. I don't yeah. know where they source the buns from, yeah, or if they make it or whatever. Um, it wasn't too sweet. It wasn't too rich. I was afraid of that. Just looking at it, I was like, oh my god, this might be really rich. Yeah, yeah, and and it's not too dense or anything. Like, you know, it it uh, the outside of the bun is like really nicely kind of uh, browned and and toasty and whatever, but uh, it just holds up really nicely. Um, We'll have to find out. I don't know. Maybe we can ask. <laughs> see where they we get could. I mean, <laughs> even though it was like a somewhat hybrid service, I think the, I don't know if she's the main girl. She, I th- it sounds like she's like the wife of the chef. Mm-hmm. Um, it's funny. Like all the wives seem like they're always like front of the house. It's like a thing or something like that. But she she was like super nice. And I think like she would have been receptive to answer her question on that. I just didn't want to like keep her. Cause I mean like customers are still like rolling in. Yeah. But, what I like about the bread was, yeah, I, and uh, it was durable too. Durable. Mm-hmm. Sometimes when you eat bows, like they'll just like break apart. Yeah, disintegrate. they break apart at a certain point, and then you're like trying to like, you know, MacGyver this sandwich mm-hmm. from the pieces and the remnants. And the the bun was, uh, like I said, there it was durable up to the pork belly, and the pork belly wasn't too mushy. Like sometimes you get like too mush where it also falls out. Yeah. yeah. Um, there was a little bit of give and I was okay with that. Good. Yeah. Same, same. And again with, uh, you know, it's a nice touch with the caramelized onions. You had some acidity from the, the pickles too. So, I mean, overall it, yeah, like you said, it's not overly rich or any, in, in any way. It's just, it's just right. It's just a right, uh, right kind of bite for, uh, for that, uh, sandwich. So. Yeah, very cool. I, I uh, definitely a good, another good hit. Yeah, you think so? <laughs> <laughs> you think so? You agree? Yeah, I think I think she agrees. <laughs> um, and then we also had a side. There was a side of a, you know, had some vegetable sides. This one was an eggplant and and bamboo. Um, nothing, nothing really wrong with it. Just overall a good. Just and it, it was like served in a deli container, so it was yeah. like easy cleanup. Yep. Um. I think it was like even disposable delis that they had. Like they literally just like everything was disposable. So it was like quick cleanup. All they need to do is just like wipe down the table and then they can turn it over. Yeah, exactly. Um, so you had the, you know, you had eggplant, you had some, some bamboo shoots in there. I mean like, and then the, you know, whatever sauce that, uh, that that's in. It was like a soy. Yeah, probably soy. You think oyster kind of sauce in there? Maybe a little bit. It was pretty thin. Mm-hmm. So if they did maybe just a tiny bit. Yeah. Um, but it was a nice, you know, again, kind of re- break, you know, between some of the, you know, the stuff we were having. Um, uh, yeah, that like, was, it was like really rescuing us. Yeah. Even though, again, these weren't overly rich or like overwhelming or anything. It's just a nice refreshment, you know. Um, I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I can't be eating that every day. <laughs> can't be eating needle every day. Now that we know how Well, good they have like congee and stuff like that. They have other dishes, but we went for like, 
we went for their greatest hits. The, it's yeah. Like, the, what do you get? Mm-hmm. Um, I think that if it was like raining and and we didn't have other places to go because like we had some other places in mind also that we were going to go like let's just say we're going to Needle and then we're going home. Right. If uh, we were just doing that, I would have totally gotten the congee or oh, yeah. like their salad because mm-hmm. they do have salads yeah. and like rice bowls and stuff and yeah. noodles. It's, like, it's not a very complicated menu. I no, think it's when not. you look it's at really it, you know. Simple. So thankfully, yeah, it's you, whatever you get there. You know, although it's you know uh, fewer, it's a simpler menu, and so I think have a better chance of uh, getting something that's good. And I think they focus more on, you know, on the quality of, you know, what they're serving there. So Yeah, and their flows of service are very simple. Like, it looks like it's her and then another girl. Yeah. Um, And I think that if there was possible table service, it, it would be a bit overwhelming. Mm-hmm. But the fact that you're, like, going through a QR code and then from there they're kind of just cleaning up, answering questions, and then running it out. I mean, I guess if you think about it, it's like a very Japanese restaurant mm. model uh which might work nowadays i guess for i guess now for society in terms Maybe. of labor and yeah pe- people like being in, in like other places like always hiring mm-hmm. you know in turnover yeah. so yeah. i like their model i hope they i hope they inevitably um evolve from there but i really enjoyed like everything there yeah same here so we will uh we'll make it a point to you know, go back. Um, again, we can't go back every day, but uh, when we do, we'll make sure to, we'll, we know we'll be enjoying it and ho- so hopefully you'll try it out too. I was going to say, if we do plan on going there and you definitely want the French toast, uh, if I was to do it again, like we have a next time, I definitely would get the French toast maybe last mm-hmm. and I would order that probably while the meal is going on. Okay. Save it to the end uh, for a nice uh, decadent dessert. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> unless you go there and that's the only thing you order. <laughs> yeah, unless like that's like you you have a purpose and that's what you wanted. Right. I totally get it. Right. So, um a lot of good hits and so hopefully uh man, we'll 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 make it out there again. Uh again, my child you missed out. So, um too bad. <laughs> <laughs> my child's been on a ton of like food adventures with you. I mean, unfortunately it just wasn't, you know. Yeah, exactly. Just just not today, but that's okay. That's all right. Um Cool, but uh, needle certainly as as good as it was. I think we would have been satisfied uh, with that, um, but I think we wanted to kind of venture out just a little more. Um, so not too far, uh, just a couple blocks away, um, we hit up a um, we hit up a, a burger spot, uh, Smash Burgers, at a spot called uh, the Window, and um, the Window actually is originally in uh, located in Venice, and it started off as kind of a concept. Um, a casual concept to this big steakhouse that they have called the American Beauty uh, in the same, you know, same complex. And they wanted to uh, serve up a more casual menu instead, um, so that it would include like smash burgers and uh, fried chicken sandwiches and, and things like that. Uh, just something very accessible and, and easy to order. And so um, they have a location in Venice. They have one at the Venice Boardwalk. And then now they have this new outpost here at uh, in Silver Lake. So um, we... Ordered just a very uh, simple, you know, kind of uh, array of, of burgers. We had a cheeseburger, a double cheeseburger, and an order of fries. So, it was um, really simple. Yeah. So, um, I mean, having said that, we we, uh, we bit into it. And uh, tell me your thoughts, you know, from that. I like how simple the ordering and then waiting outside. I mean, it was a little cold. So, like, I think yeah. it's in spring or fall, it would be really pretty, yeah. to, like, to just stand out there and hang out. Mm-hmm. Uh, that being said, I mean, God, there's so many smash burger places out there now. But the thing is, like, in terms of style and what's in vogue. Okay, so before, like, Nashville Hot Chicken uh, was in style, like, each place was, like, it's, like, uh, not so good or, like, okay, I like the sides, I don't like the chicken or... Uh, way too much chili powder, like mm-hmm. you know, like th- they would widely be different. But with smash burgers, I'm okay with duplicate smash burger okay. rice because yeah. I like burgers in general. You can't yeah. go wrong with meat, cheese, and bun. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked the burger. Good. We we kind of had a little bit of debate about the bun, but I actually <laughs> like the bun. Okay. And sometimes the bun does get in the way, but I don't think it got in the way. I kind of like the texture of everything. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. I, I had just thought that it was um, not not to knock it because overall it is a it's a great package, especially for the price point you're getting. I just thought the bread was just a little 
I don't know, bready for lack of a better word. It just felt a bit. But do you think it takes away from the meat when you say bready? No, but I, I think when um I feel like the I'm I'm recognizing more of the bread when I'm kind of biting into it. Like it it's like, oh here like I have the meat and then oh here I am, the bread says, and uh it just kinda <laughs> Here I am, the breads. I think a hot take for me would be the meat lacing. Uh -huh. So I was commenting that there was not a lot of uh, meat lace on these burgers. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think the meat lace takes away from the taste of everything. Because mm. I'm just eating this meat chip. Oh, sure. Yeah. The edges can be super crispy. And yeah, you're I was, right. I mean, I like it for the most part. But sometimes... Yeah. Um, it can be overdone. The f Yeah. Sometimes uh, it kind of gets in the way. It almost like... I guess the burntness mm -hmm, or something mm -hmm. kind of gets in the way of like everything else. Yeah. But in this case, um, there wasn't really too much of that. It was just a nice smash and thin patty and uh, just... I like the sauce. Top yeah, the of the sauce, sauce. Was good. Yeah, pickle and... and the fries know. are good. Fries frozen out of the bag. <laughs> we don't need to be making our own fries and smash burger places, no, I, you know? No, I think so. I think if you just, if you know the brown bag, then I think you're good. So, yeah. um, but the fries, yeah, I mean, you'd be... Just happy with it, just eating it right out of the uh, right out of the bag. Probably if you had waited, if it probably had to be delivered or something to you, then maybe you need to reheat it or something. Yeah, that's what I said. Like, I'd be sad, I think, if I got this delivered to my house because the fries would. They definitely. I f I feel like they're definitely a. I, I mean, we can came at a good time where there was like a lot of people ordering, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. stuff wasn't really getting left, you know, to to be cold. Yeah, yeah. Um. So like. Based on like the fries, they were really fresh, yeah. and the burgers were really fresh. It was also noontime on a Sunday where everyone is out and about. Yeah, but thankfully, I think we, like you said, our timing was pretty good. We got a good batch, and um, it wasn't it wasn't too crazy, you know, um, to wait or or anything like that. I mean, in the seating even itself, it, it's just like these small stool, stools or something outside. Um, you use the stools as your seats, and also it's a little table, I guess. I don't know, but. Uh, Overall, I mean, it was an easy, just, I think it's a, it's really a way to just kind of grab and go, you know, with that kind of food, you know? Yeah. I'm wondering if they set, is that tent always been there? Um, I mean, for that spot. Has it always been yeah. there? I was wondering if they put it up because of the rain or something like that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's cute. I mean, I kind of wish that they had like a little bit more of a set setup, but because the bread place there has tables and chairs. You're right. And then, um, <laughs> the dog keeps trying to bump into your mic I know. um and then the cafe a little bit adjacent to that has like tables and chairs like i think that they should just fucking invest in tables and probably chairs. probably i mean that like i said that space is used a lot you know for uh things like farmers markets and yeah. other events and They're stuff probably just trying to save money by being like oh here they probably plastic yeah stools. exactly and as a reminder, Prine and Crane is just down, just a couple of doors down as they well. Want, yeah, Angela wanted to get that, but I was <laughs> like, you know, we just had dumplings last week. Yeah. Well, I thought we were going to lean into our kind of lunar theme, but that's, uh, we'll have to say that for another day. Yeah. But um, I think for what we had, I thought it was, uh, that was pretty good. Yeah. So, um, so that was, uh, that was the window, um, in, in Silver Lake. And um, there are other, I mean, you know, on our way, we, I mean, we just kind of, Stopped by other couple places too. I don't know. Um, you had some coffee and, you know, we. Yeah, it was like, ni it's nice to walk around that area. Like I said, like ton of hipsters, lots of specialty clothing stores that I can't afford. Yeah. Oh. There's an undefeated, <laughs> oh, if you want to over, yeah. overpay on shoes. Um, no, it's a cute area. It's a very cute area. So, yeah, I, I also shared uh, with Jamie and uh, this is more of a personal story that uh, when, uh, you know, we grew up and grew up up in that area and would walk home from from high school and um, uh, walk down on sunset. And uh, before we would walk up one of the streets like uh, that would be a steep, steep hill. We w my friend and I would uh, uh, stop by the 99 cent store and we would buy like a package of uh, Fig Newtons. And would you uh, eat it while you're walking up? Correct. As like a distraction Be before, steep up before, walk. during and after. <laughs> Just throughout the whole throughout the whole process. Did and you think like this was a hike or something? Like you'd be going on a journey. Correct. With yeah. those Newtons. Yes, because <laughs> we're just so so lazy. So, um, but that's what we did, and uh, that was good. That was good. I, I enjoyed that. And the ninety nine cent store is still there, so that's fine. Um, you know, it's a cute area. That whole area. Like, there's some. I definitely want to try that me Mexican place. What tacos Delta? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Just because it was like there that, since 1981, that like had the it has best to be chilaquiles. 
it's they it's funny they claim but uh, i mean i would like to see one of these days okay all right well we'll uh, we'll pay a visit there and see if it's uh, what it's all about but um so that was that was needle and and the window um both in silver lake and uh we places we really enjoyed um but afterwards uh we also tried to do some errands i think and um <laughs> Uh, maybe you can share some of your plight with uh, trying to find certain things at uh, you know in the grocery store. Um, I'm trying to find a certain mochi. Um, I already forgot what it's called. And then I also needed kinaku powder, which is soybean powder, because I'm going to be making not only s'mores bars, but I'm going to be making a mochi and peanut rice crispy treat mm-hmm, with mm-hmm. brown butter for yeah. a friend for his retirement birthday. So we went to H Mart in Koreatown. Right. It's a really nice H Mart. Yeah. Um, honestly, I think Arcadia was is bigger. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Wow, my dog just tongued me. <laughs> Very affectionate. Totally licked my teeth. Very affectionate. Jesus, Jesus. parsnip. Um, <laughs> she's like, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, it wasn't as big as the Arcadia one. No, I don't think so. I think we just. I think we had gone there. I mean. Namely because it was closer, relatively speaking. So we just kind of wanted to see what was out there already. Um, but maybe we, we might have had more more luck at, at the Arcadia uh, location. But um, so, I mean, it, if, if if you can find out what the name of that mochi is, because it's not the sweet mochis that you're looking because they have packages of those, right? Like, you know. Um, tons of packages of those. Yeah. But, we're looking, but you were looking for something that you need to kind of cook or hydrate first or something, um, you know. Uh, to include into your dish, but I'm uh, to find it. okay. Uh, kiri mochi. Kiri that's mochi. What it's called. Okay, so we'll have to do some research as to where uh, you know. If you know where to find kiri mochi, please uh, reach out <laughs> and let us know. Uh, but um, uh, perhaps when you uh, run some errands uh, tomorrow, maybe you'll you'll have some better luck uh, wherever you find it. Yeah, I need to try to find it. Um, I mean, if not, I'd just make mochi with peanuts and chocolate or something like yeah. that. I just have to pivot <laughs> based on time. <laughs> All right. Um, oh shoot! This is my iPod. Sorry about that. I was trying to not let that happen. Um, but yeah, based on time, I'm gonna have to. I'll have to pivot. Maybe we'll see. Um, like I said, I'm trying not to trip in terms of time and like doing all of this and that and errands this year. Mm-hmm. Um, so and uh, yeah, Rice Krispie treats on their own are even good. But I kind of just wanted to see what kind of a funky spin I can put. Okay. Sounds good. Because there's going to be apparently a ton of different Rice Krispie treats like being made for his birthday. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure. Is, is he? Does he just like Rice Krispie treats in general? Is that what he it is? He likes or? desserts in general. Desserts. Um, okay. This is a direct quote from him. Uh, I didn't get this body by eating vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> I should put that on a shirt. I think uh, that would be a great yeah, quote to live by. Because I had asked him, I was like, is there a certain dessert that you like? And he's like, honestly, he's like... Uh, I'm not biased unless it's cheesecake. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, great. I'm. I don't want to make a cheesecake. Exactly. Uh, so uh, I think Rice Krispie treats are easy, and they don't require eggs. They just require a lot of butter. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, that's right. Save on uh, on that inflation. Oh man, that's crazy. <laughs> but okay. Uh, sounds good. Well, that's uh, that was needle and and the window again, and hopefully, you know, when um. When my child is, uh, you know, alive again, then maybe we can uh, we can meet up for once and um, actually do something together, you know. Cause it I mean, ha- I hope so. Because I realize it has been a long time since you actually seen him. Yeah, right? it's been like one to two years, honestly. Yeah. I'm trying to think like the last time I saw him, and I think it was before COVID. Oh, man, that is too long ago, man. Yeah. So, yeah, that's all right. You got anything to say, Parsnip? No? Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine well with that said i think we've come to the end of, uh, of another episode so thank you for joining us we are excited to bring you more of our food adventures uh, with good food and good people so reach out who are here on instagram i'm at dumb and hungry she's at blunt sarcasm uh apparently she's also on uh, be real uh but uh you can also reach out here uh on the email hi at dumb and um we'll also occasionally stream on youtube so you can jump on the chat uh, when we're there And then you can also find the audio wherever fine podcasts are served. But until next time, I'm Angelo. And I'm Jamie, and I'm not dumb. (laughs) And on your next food adventure, remember to try one of each. Bye.